Hi, and we're live again with my snappy chats, which I'm just loving doing every week because it's all about learning and growing in business together because being in business can be so lonely. I'm Christine Bell, in case you don't know me, Danish accent. And what I love doing is these snappy chats with amazing business owners around the world because we all have something that we can learn from each other. We all go through challenges in business. And when we come together, we not only feel that we are part of something bigger, that we're not so lonely, we also learn and grow with each other and we can collaborate and, and build with each other. So with this in mind, I've got a beautiful, beautiful soul today. She's from Melbourne, albeit she's about to travel around Australia to avoid the, the cold uh, because winter is coming quite literally. It came this week uh, to the southern parts of Australia. So her beautiful girl is Jackie. She is an actress by training, but she's also the public speaker to learn from in Australia. So I'm going to bring her on now and she can tell you a lot more about what she does and who she is. So let's bring her on. Here we go. Hello, Jackie. How are you? Christine, good morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate your time today and saying yes to being part of this. Oh, absolutely. And thank you for introducing me as the person trying to escape winter. It's I've got a turtleneck on for a reason. Me too. Like, <laughs> it's been a fantastic summer, by the way, in Sydney and literally I, changed yeah. yesterday. <laughs> yeah, correct. I'm out of here. No, I'm joking. <clears throat> <laughs> oh, that's so wonderful. I'm just going to let you introduce yourself. But before I do that, I just want to give a couple of shout outs. We already got people watching right now. So Mike Eschenbrauner, he's the, the, the founder of um, the Hans Community of Business, amazing community. He's very much in the US at the moment, but you're building Australia. So if you're interested, Jackie, you should come and be a part of it too. We've got Yay. Isabel from the Hans as well, amazing lady. She's all about the mindset in the Canada Jackie Holbeck, oh, I love her. She's also from the US and part of the Hounds community. And she's all about helping people who have actually been in prison and in jail and helping them restore their life and have a meaningful and purposeful life after that. We got the amazing Suzanne Dawn. We got Brett Packett. Oh, he's the smartest guy in terms of finances and learning so much from her, from him, sorry, not her. Lonnie and Suzanne, thank you so much, everyone, for being here. You're all amazing. And back to you, Jackie. Please tell us about you. Thanks, Christine. Thank you for everyone joining us as well. Um, this doesn't, I, I don't take it lightly that you've taken out time from your day. But hi, I'm Jackie Maloney. Uh, as Christine just said, my background is that I'm in acting and voiceover. But in the last couple of years, thank you, COVID, I have since pivoted a little bit and now wanting to help others have that confidence to really take their story to the stage you know, to camera, if you're wanting to share more of your story and getting it out to more people to influence, to make impact, to inspire, then I am the person to call. Um, it is my love. It's my passion. And I just love how helping people on stage. You can have I the best that. keynote written, but if I, if you can't bring that to life on the stage, when you're standing there in front of your audience, you're just missing a big opportunity. So stagecraft is my jam. Um, and I love it. I just love the performance side of things. I love that. And you know what? It's so true. You know, we can have the best speech prepared. Yeah. But unless we can deliver it in a way where we actually are able to not only feel very confident and very good in ourselves and feel positive and have that energy that we want to be there. We want to be on stage. And that's the way we need to do it to engage with people, isn't it? Because it's all about how do we engage? How do we actually make people feel something when they see you on the stage? Is that true? Oh, absolutely. And when you're standing at a lectern and you've got your script or you've got your cards or your, you keep referring back to slides behind you, you're really yeah. missing this opportunity, A, for eye contact, which is what your audience is craving from you. They want that connection. They are in that audience for a reason. They want to feel something. They want to hear something being told differently for the first time because yeah. some, you know, maybe what their past experience has been haven't landed for them. So they're sitting there waiting for you to present and to Absolutely. connect with them. So when we're behind a script, I feel like we're talking at our audience. When we're free and we have that confidence, as you just said, to perform and be present, that's where that true audience engagement happens and that's where the connection really sinks in. I love that. And you know what? One of the things I've had to learn putting myself out on LinkedIn is that thing of moving away from a script and being a lot more present because when we're present, then we're actually able to respond to what's happening in the moment and to notice how people are engaging with us or if they're not engaging with us, right? 
we're actually able to pick up on it and and figure out on the spot naturally how do we change our game what do we say now yeah but it's a big learning to step away from a script so how do you feel about a script versus the total improv uh, improv improv way oh do we have enough time for this question okay <laughs> no maybe not <laughs> Right. So from an acting perspective, we are in rehearsal for two months, three months, four months before a live theatre show. Uh, So that is where we get to play. That's where we get to find where these beautiful moments are in our scripts. And then when we get on stage, we've got to let go of everything, right? We know that we've done the work. We know that we've memorised our lines. We know that there are key moments in which we need to move on stage or really need to connect with that that, um, scene partner. But then in the moment when we're in front of our audience, it's just like, now it's game time. Okay. All of my lines are in there somewhere. But on the flip side of that is you are going to have moments on stage and I don't care how prepared you are, things are going to stuff up. You're going to miss your lines. You're going to stumble. You're going, someone's going to, their phone's going to ring. Someone's going to walk out of the audience because of something completely irrelevant to you. And it's how you bounce back in those moments that makes an, in like such an impactful speaker and much more engaging presentation because yeah, you've removed yourself from the confines of your script and needing to know everything and be perfect. Mm -hmm. And you just become a human being. And now we're having a conversation rather than a presentation about such and such. I feel like I'm connected with you. So whilst I agree, yes, scripts are important, I don't think you should be beholden to them and that comes in rehearsal, but there is this beautiful way of having a little bit more of impro so that you can connect with your audience and really, and, you know, on their level. I love that. And and Mike was just saying, yes, absolutely, Jack, it's about being free and present. It's all about connection. And you know what? And I know what we would just talk before we came on and we were talking about mindset. And I think it leads into mindset in terms of, and you tell me what you think. When we when we're on stage and things are gonna go wrong, yeah, there's gonna be mistakes. For me, it requires a certain level of confidence that I'm good enough, that I'm valuable enough, even when I'm stuffed up. And that's a mindset for me. And it was a big mindset shift for me that I can make mistakes and still laugh about it and still get on with it and still connect and sometimes connect even better. Oh, yeah. Is that is that is this is this what you think as well in terms of mindset, or what would you say in terms of being totally free up on stage? Yeah, I look. I think it's twofold in this question. Yeah, um, that mindset work has to come partly because of your passion for what it is that you're doing, right? Yeah. So in these moments when we falter, and even taking it a step back before we get on stage, those moments that you might pitch yourself for a podcast interview or a speaking opportunity, and Maybe you just don't hear anything or it's a hard no. You know, like these moments can really derail us. As an actor, I can't tell you how many no's I've received, right? That is the one thing I've heard about from actors all the time. They said it really teaches you to take rejection well, yeah? Yeah, this skin is thick for a reason. (laughs) But the other side of that is knowing that, and this is going to sound very cliche, but failure improves us. We can only learn from failure. Um, An example that I was sharing with a friend the other day is I walked into this uh, TV commercial audition. Now, normally we just get the casting director, but today it happened to be the director in the room first go. And they don't give you a lot of information. They just, they want to see your interpretation of it, right? So walk in, I do my first take. They pressed cut the um, director pissed himself laughing. And excuse me for my American friends, he cracked up laughing. And I said, uh, did I do something wrong? And he said, you've actually pronounced the name of the company incorrect. It was an acronym. I'd stuffed it up. He lost it. He'd never heard anyone do that before. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know. But in that, in that moment, he decided that I was the right person that he wanted to spend 12 hours on set with to film this commercial because he saw me accept the humility um, and the humour of it all and I went straight back to my mark. I took his direction and I implemented it straight away and he's like, great, I can spend time. uh, Yep. And so I got the commercial and, you know, Christine, that was a $10,000 commercial. I love that and great money too. So congratulations. And you know what? I really resonate (laughs) I have a Danish accent and 
some of the people, Mike, etc., will uh, tell you that there are certain words that I just, and my husband too will say, tell you, there's certain words which I pronounce in Denglish, basically, yeah? I cannot pronounce it correctly, and I'm trying and trying and trying to get those R's going, the target market, I say with an yes. A, not an R. And, you know, I have to accept that, and it's been a big thing for me to sort of go, you know what, this is who I am, I'm trying my best, yeah? <laughs> Take it or leave it, this is who I am. Absolutely. But I just want to remind everyone watching that it's not the end of the world if you make a mistake in front of an audience. In fact, it's endearing. People will forgive you. In two weeks' time, no one is going to remember that you stuffed up your line or you paused probably for half a second longer than you think you needed to because you were just like, oh, my God, what's my next? And then off we go. No one cares. They are so concerned with what's going on in their own life. No one yeah. cares. So please don't let that derail you before you even have an opportunity to get on stage or film a video or put yourself out there. Like just just go yeah. for it and you'll catch yourself, I promise. I know. And I'm starting to learn to laugh at myself. And I will say that putting myself on social media has been the biggest, biggest learning curve for me and also something I'm really pleased that I've done because from when I started and I was reading the script out and I'm so nervous, you know, now I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's see what happens, yeah? So yeah. I think it comes back to what we're talking about and what you talked about in terms of challenge, the whole thing about mindsets. So tell me a little bit more about that challenge that you faced in terms of mindset and business. Yeah, so the mindset for me is, and we were chatting about this before we went live, it's just that, that, that self-talk. I think for me, one of my biggest challenges in business is that self-talk. And trust me, there are many challenges in business. And like I said, I am an actor. So running a small business was never part of my training, I guess. But the mindset talk was, and still is, and nothing's perfect. And I think as you level up and you, you get more experience and you take on more opportunities, that self-talk comes with you. Yeah. Um, but much like what I say to my clients when they ask me, do the nerves ever go away? And the answer is no but our ability to deal with those nerves changes over time. That's a huge insight right there. Like, because I think a lot of us is going, oh, well, hopefully one day I just won't feel nervous. It's like, nah, you're going to keep feeling nervous, but you're going to be okay. You're going to be able to ride through it rather than completely stumble you, yeah? Absolutely. I mean, I, I still get nervous. I've been acting for 12 years now, and every time I walk into an audition, those nerves come up. But I've been able to mask that in certain ways that allows my voice not to quiver or allows my hands not to shake or I have to, you know, have better exercises in the morning in my lead up to that, that, yeah. um, that audition that grounds me. So it's just like, okay, cool, I feel you nerves and I know that you're not going anywhere but I know how to deal with you now, right? Yeah. The most important part of this exercise is how I connect with the casting director or how I connect with my audience when I get on stage. They are the most important thing for me. And isn't that the truth in business as well? Whether you're on a stage or you're actually trying to uh, make a sale, it actually starts with the connection first and foremost. Think about how you can best connect. How can you best service people? How can you best be there? How can you best be present for them? How can you make them feel seen and heard? And I just want to add in here, Brett was saying, you know, it's never as bad as we think, which is so true. You're saying that as well. Susanna is saying this is actually, you know, bottom line, don't worry, just be your authentic self, which I authentic self here I am, you know, not being able to pronounce it. Uh, you know, and that's that's what it comes back to, isn't it? In terms of mindset, in terms of that inner voice has to turn in from a critical into our greatest supporter, the one that truly loves who we are, whatever way we show up at our best, yeah? Absolutely. Well, the other thing that I wanted to add quickly is yeah. knowing knowing that worth, knowing your ability to do what it is that you do so well. Uh, when the camera is in your face and we're running out of light and the, the clock is ticking and I've got, you know, the um, producer is all the way on the other side of the country, the director standing in front of me going, they want to go again, they don't like these takes, and you just sit there with all of this pressure on you and you just go... Yeah. I'm not good enough. Why did they pick me? This was stupid. So, And you can't because the camera is this far away from you. And in those moments, I have to go, I was booked for a reason. I am incredible at what I do. Go back to my skill set, go back to my techniques, and I deliver exactly what it is that they want through Jackie's lens. And then they're just like, great, he loved that one. Let's move on next, next scene. 
that's such an important thing because you know because you are literally right in front of the camera and there are a lot of creative people and a lot of people with the money who have opinions yeah and they have strong oh. opinions yeah <laughs> and they will come i'm sure come straight at you yeah with their interpretation of what they want from you and what they think you could do better yeah and yeah. you have to deliver and smile at them and just keep going yeah, absolutely. I mean, so many clients come to me and go, oh, I could never speak on stage because I know that there will be people in the audience that don't agree with what I'm saying or this or that. And I'm just like, great, bring that on. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it's your perspective. It's your experience. No one can take that away from you. It's your knowledge. You're going, when you put yourself out there into the world, People are going to say, no, no, I don't agree. No, that's not correct. And that's part of it. That's yeah. part of life. And I don't like to bring them into too many parts of my conversation. But honestly, if the Kardashians took every piece of negative feedback, critique, press, whatever, they would never be where they are now. No. Like billion dollar moguls in their own right. Again, I'm not a Kardashian stan, but I admire their work ethic and their ability to turn off those haters because they have plenty. They yeah. have so many, but they're going to launch something next week. They're going to make their next million dollars. Like let that go and stay in your lane as long as your purpose is there and your drive is there. That's such a good point because um, if we let everyone else run our life, then we're going to be sitting at the back row because, you know, there are a lot of people with a lot of opinions about how I could do things better or how I could do, do things differently or what they yeah. thought about a specific video put out. Was my energy enough for them? Was it high or low enough? I'm like, you know what? I actually was me. I was doing me. And the last thing I said to someone the other day, I was like, I do me, you do you. Yep. Unless you're paying me and you're specifically paying me to like you when you are on a set and you've got the camera in your face and they're paying you, then you know what? I appreciate your opinion, but it really isn't. I don't know what you want me to, how you want me to use it. You know, I'm going to be me the way I am. Absolutely. Yep. I agree. Wonderful. So how do we change that mindset? How have you learned to change take off, you know, change that critical one to someone who truly can go in a, in a critical moment, go, you know what, I'm good enough, I'm worthy, I was hired for a reason. How do you yes. switch that? Because that's a big switch in a moment it, of, you know, when we're going for it, yeah? Absolutely. And I was just saying, sharing this with a friend the other day, um, beautiful small business owner in Perth, actually, Perth in Australia, and yeah. she's about to launch her very first in-person workshop. And it was that negative self-talk of who am I to be running a workshop? Why would anyone pay me this amount of money? She's honestly, like her workshop is $300. Like it is cheap. Yeah. All of this negative self-talk was happening for her. Then she got sick because the children bring everything home from daycare or school. And I don't have children, so I can't comment, but I have definitely visited my nephews and then been sick yeah. for the next week. So thank you, yeah. nephews. But <laughs> What I encouraged her to do, and some of you are probably already have this or already have heard this, but it's having that folder of your testimonials, of text messages, LinkedIn messages, DMs, whatever it looks like, of people telling you how amazing you are and what you've done to change their life. Such an important point you're making right there. So we can have the haters, but as much as we can sort of say, okay, we can put them aside, what's really important, what I'm hearing is, have a community of your yes sayer, the ones who support you, the one who thinks you're brilliant, the ones even when you stuff up are going to go, you know what, you're still amazing. Those yeah. are the ones we want to keep close, especially in business because it can get really tough and lonely business. So we need that community. And I just want to say a big, big thank you again to the Hounds of Business and Mike and all the lovely people from there and everyone else here who is not part of the Hounds of Business but are great supporters of mine for showing up and being here for me because – that's what it's all about, having that inner group of people that we can trust to be there for us, isn't it? Yeah. I was just working with a client the other day and she was sharing part of her story with me so we can go and craft a keynote for her. And there was this one moment that she said that got me and she got uh, she got teary about it as well. She said this beautiful quote of sometimes you just need someone to believe in you. Yeah. And this is a woman in her 40s, mother, has experienced everything that life has to throw at you. But in that moment, she has someone 
that she can send a text to and just saying, I'm really flat or I'm feeling this kind of way and knowing that person will respond and go, you're amazing. Pick yourself back up. You know, you've got this, all of that sort of stuff. And yeah. we need those people in our lives and we need to remind ourselves of those conversations and those exact words when we are on stage or we're in front of a camera and we're like, I am drowning here, but I can't stop and text my friend. So yeah. it's that dialogue we need to keep with us in our heart space and just be like, that's right. I am incredible. I'm going to do this. This is why I'm booked. Let's get through the next scene. Boom. Off we go. I love it. Absolutely love it. And if we do it in enough times, yeah, then it becomes habit. It doesn't just become something we have to, oh, what do I do now? It's like, yeah, here it is. I remember what they said to me. You can almost hear the inner, their voice talking to you, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I love that. So for everyone listening today, what would be the key thing right now? If they're scared of getting on social media, podcasting, on stage, whatever it is, delivering their workshop, what would be some of the key advice you'd give them now in terms of how do we move forward? And I know there's steps to it. You know, mindset takes a while to to re reprogram, so to speak. Yeah, great. I love this question. What I share with my clients is getting them to create micro moments of confidence. So if it's something, if you're wanting to get on socials more often, what I often encourage my clients to do is they're so freaked out by this thing, our yeah. phone, right? We're on it every single day, but as soon as the camera is facing you and you press record, we become stunned mullets or frozen or whatever it is you want to talk yeah. or want to say. The most incredible minds who have so much experience, knowledge, um, things that they want to pass on to the next generation. It's like a different human as soon as I put a camera in front of them. So if your goal is to be better on socials or to do more camera work, what I want you to do is have your phone. I want you to open up to camera setting and I want you to record yourself yeah. all over the house. If you're brushing your teeth, if you're washing the dishes, if you're sitting there just watching TV, I want you to record yourself and I want you to check in with yourself and go, cool, I see you. And then over time, you're going to have this conversation with your phone. It's just like, okay, great. I see you. You're there. Actually, I don't, I don't look so bad today. <laughs> you know? Or yeah. you might be like, okay, cool. Right. I'm just going to have a conversation with myself. I'm going to say it at my phone. Okay, great. So, you know, my work today was uh, was challenging and I had a conversation with Troy and it didn't go down as well as I thought it was going to go. And then you might wrap that back. Oh, I didn't um and ah through that. I meant I talked about something that was important to me. I didn't overthink it. It came quite naturally. That was that was pretty good. I'm going to I'm going to try that again. And so we just build these micro moments of confidence. Yeah. And then when we do go to be on socials, you're just like I've practiced all of this. Yeah. I've done this. I don't look so bad on camera anymore. Or maybe I'm just going to put a slick of makeup on to make myself feel better and make myself feel more confident. So it's these micro moments of confidence. If you want to speak on stage, Start writing some stuff. Could you introduce yourself without slides or without a notes? I hope you can because that is the number one thing for me. If I see someone on stage and they go, hi, my name is Jackie Maloney and I'm a public speaking coach, I'm like, I'm done. I don't, yeah. I don't have confidence There's in this. There's no team. connection here, yeah. <laughs> well, if you can't introduce yourself off a page, I'm worried. But, the, yeah, it's about creating these micro moments of confidence. And yeah. as you build up to it, you're going to go from here to here so much quicker than if you go nothing, 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 nothing. I have to do a video, overwhelm, yeah. procrastinate. It looks terrible. Why did I do that in the first place? So, yeah, it's and just... Yeah. I love that. I love that. And before we finish up, we'll finish up shortly. I'll just tell my story. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I got to do social uh, videos. And I did get some training from an uh, actress in Hollywood, actually, because I chose an actress. So when I met you, I'm like, yeah, if I was doing yeah. public speaking, that is exactly what I would uh, hire an actress, yeah, or an actor. Mm -hmm. And um, and it was so interesting because I had to go on video and do my video on, on, on LinkedIn and I was so scared and, you know, I edited it, I was scripted, I edited the whole thing, the life out of it, you know, but I put it out there. I'm like, I'm just going to put it out there. And you know what I learned was most people, especially on LinkedIn, are going to support you. If you're showing up vulnerable saying, hey, I said, hello, this is my first video. I'm trying to introduce myself. And here I am. And I had 23,000 views. I had so many messages saying, well done, good on you. 
It was by far not a great video, but I did it. And from there, I started getting confidence and knowing that, yes, there are haters out there, but there are actually more people who are going to support you because they get it. They understand and they can connect with that. Yeah. And they're going to say, well done, because they're too afraid to do it themselves. So they know what it's taken you to get there and they applaud the hell out of you for that. Yeah. So well done. That's such a great example. Yeah. So we just remember that to everyone. So thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Everyone is saying amazing nuggets, amazing. Learn so much from you. Mike is saying, come and join the house community. So if you're interested, let's talk. Uh, yeah, so it's amazing. So thank you so much. And I don't know if there's any other here. I'm just checking through. No, very endearing. Fantastic. Failure and rejection absolutely does improve us, Jackie. That's Jason saying that. Um, thank you, Jason. And people saying, yes, you're an amazing, awesome guest. So people are loving you. So thank you so much. Now, before we leave and love you, uh, please tell us a little bit about how people connect with you. You've got any events coming up or anything you want to promote? Yes, absolutely. And I know that most of the people who are watching today are in the States, but I would love to love to work with you. Um, I used to, I trained as an actor in New York. So the, that side of the country, the, the um, East Coast has got a very, very important place in my heart. Uh, but yes, uh, I do a lot of work with one-on-ones via Zoom. Um, as I said before, my expertise is in that stagecraft and bringing your words to life. So if you're at that stage of your speaking journey where you're on a few stages, I would be the best person to work with to really elevate that to the next level. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, in Australia, I've got some in-person workshops coming up in both um, Perth and Sydney coming up in May. So I'll have some details for you that we can put in the notes afterwards. Uh, but that is... I'm just getting back to wanting to be in the room with people to see those transformations happening live in front of me because that's what would happen with me in an acting class. I'm trying to bring that back into my coaching. I love that. So thank you for sharing. And I can't wait to hopefully meet you in Sydney when you come by Sydney on your way up to the north and to the sunshine. Correct. Breakfast at Jackie's and it's not my cafe, but I'll take it. <laughs> I know it's right next to our, where I live and it's Jackie's and it's an institution in Sydney, isn't it? It is. Yes, it is. So thank you so much for your time and uh, feel free to share everything in the comments afterwards and go in and check them out. There's so many amazing comments for you. So thank you so much for everyone watching. We really appreciate you. Um, and Mike saying, you know, we'll support anyone trying to get out there, putting courage before confidence. Yeah. So that's what it's all about. Get ourselves thank out you. there. So thank you so much for your time and for being here today. I really appreciate your time, Jackie. Thank and you for having me. Thank advice. you everyone for watching. Thank you everyone. Take care. We